Some product. How does it work? And when do we use it? Hey guys, this is Basant. In this video, we demystify and master some product. We begin by exploring the intuition in depth so we can understand exactly how it works. Next, we practice not with one, but two Excel exercises to make sure we know when and how to use some product. If you want to follow along in the exercises, please download the Excel sheet in the link in the description box below. Without further ado, let's get started. To grasp the intuition of some product, we will break it down into three simple steps. The first step is the multiplication of tables to give us a product. Then we apply conditions to that product. And finally, we sum up the elements meeting the conditions we applied. Let's look at the first step. We have tables A and B, and we want to multiply them. We perform element-wise multiplication, meaning that the first row and the first column of table A will be multiplied by the first row, first column of table B. 1 times 3 gives us 3. The first row, second column of table A will be multiplied by the first row, second column of B. 4 times 4 gives us 16, and so on. Because of this corresponding element multiplication nature of the multiplication, we cannot multiply tables of different sizes. This will result in an error. So now that we finished the first step and we have the product of the tables, we want to apply conditions on that table. Let's say we want to keep the elements that are 16 only. This means that we need to see the rest of the elements as zeros so that they do not affect our sum. So basically what we're saying here, if the elements are equal to 16, keep them in the table so I can sum them up. Else, make sure that the other elements do not affect my sum, which means that these elements must be zero. So how does that work in Excel? I'll give you a hint. We need to multiply this table by another table to make sure that we keep the 16, which satisfy our conditions, and make sure that all the rest are not going to be added. Feel free to pause this video and reflect on what this table might look like. So to do that, the conditions that you actually write in some product are translated into a table of the same size as the product of zeros and ones. When you multiply three by zero, you will get zero. However, because we want to keep the 16, we will multiply it by one. So to eliminate the elements from this table in the addition, we will multiply them by zeros. So we don't want any of these because they don't meet our conditions. So we have here zeros. This is the table reflecting the conditions you applied here. And the 16s are kept by being multiplied by one, which gives us this table. So now you will only be able to add the 16s. The others are zero, which means they won't affect our sum. This is the third step, adding the elements that met the condition we specified. 16 plus 16 will give us 32, and the zeros have no bearing on our sum. So again, the three steps are multiply the tables element-wise, apply the conditions, Excel will internally translate it into another tables of zeros and ones, zeros to make sure that the elements you do not want will not be added and the elements you want will be added to get this and finally the elements meeting our conditions will be summed up to give us the result some products can be useful let's look at some examples let's look at the supermarket receipt spreadsheet so here we have the different categories of products that we purchased for example meat we have the price per quantity and the quantity we bought. Same for vegetables and fruits and for carbohydrates. Now, say I want to find what is the total amount I spent for the meat products. So traditionally, we would multiply the price per quantity and quantity. And then we would sum up the results. So multiplying these two, price per quantity times quantity, we apply that to the rest. And finally, we sum up the product. So what did I do here? I multiplied these two tables 
I don't have conditions, but I summed up the results. Hmm. What operation does that remind you of? So, yes, we can use some products here. So, we will select the tables we want to multiply, which are price per quantity and quantity. There are no conditions to apply, so we will close the parentheses and we will enter so that it sums up the product. The same result. We will repeat this for vegetables and fruits and for carbohydrates. Make sure to adjust the range of the tables. So this is the first table we want to multiply. This is the second table we want to multiply. And finally, for carbohydrates. We did it very simply and quickly. We would have had to multiply the price and quantity here and then sum it up, price and quantity here and then sum it up. And just imagine if we had so many tables. Here I just did it in one formula and I just corrected the range for the tables. Now, what if I want the details of a particular product? Let's say I have so many tables. Am I going to look through them all to get the information I want? Like, let's say we have the product wheat. I want to know how much did I spend on wheat and how many. So, quick question. We can sum up those to get the grand total. Is there another way to do it? Well, guess what? We can even use some product here. So, the first step is to multiply the tables. So we have nothing to multiply, I just have this table. Since there is no other table I'm specifying, there will be no multiplication, there are no conditions. And so this is our table, we will add it up. And that's exactly what happens. Looking at the receipt, we can see that carbohydrates have the biggest share of the amount we spent. But which product is contributing to this amount? If we have many categories and many products, it would be so time consuming to look product by product, quantity by quantity. Do we have so much time? What if I tell you we can enter here the product name and we can get what is the price per quantity and what is the total price we spent to help us understand which product contributes to this big amount? And yes, some product can help us here. So remember, some product has multiplication, condition, and summing the results. These are the three operations we can use at our disposal step by step. So let's apply some product here. We want the quantity price of the specified product. The first question we need to ask ourselves, where is the table that we need to multiply? So we need this table, wheat price per quantity. Actually, since this is the quantity price, we don't need to perform any multiplication elements. And as we said, if we specify one table, no multiplication happens. The table stays as it is. Now, what condition do we want to apply? Open parenthesis. We want to make sure that the product price per quantity is the same as the product we specify here. So we want to make sure that the column of wheat, pasta, rice, bread, so the one specifying the product type to be the same as the one we entered here. So this equals the input, close parentheses for the condition, close parentheses for the formula. There you have it, 43. Now, what if I write pasta, 52. Oh, it changes, so I don't need to look through the products. Now, let's say we want to find the total price I spent. Can you pause the video and think of the formula yourself? All right. So, first question. Which tables do we need? We need the price per quantity table. And we need the quantity table because we need to multiply them to get the total, right? Okay. What conditions do we need to apply? Meaning, which product am I interested in? I want to get the total amount I spent on the product I specify here. So the product is specified by this column. 
and I want to make sure that I'm selecting the particular product I specify. Close parenthesis. So when I multiply these two tables of price per quantity and quantity, I will only keep the results of the first row because this will be the result of wheat. If I wanted wheat, I will keep the results only of the second row if I wanted pasta. So here it should give us 52 times 3, which is correct in this case. There is no need to perform a sum because 52 times 3 will be 156. The rest are filtered out, so the sum of one number is the number itself. Let's see if this works for rice. Hmm, yes it does. For bread, it does. So as you can see, we can use some products to use less formulas. So if you want to multiply and then add up tables, we can use some product. Uh, another way to use some product if you want to uh, selectively multiply and add results. So the selection could be based on input, which is the most common usage of some product. So I'm entering the input and then I get the results I'm looking for, for this particular input, which is used as a condition. For this condition, I will perform multiplication of the tables I chose, and then I will add up the results. Here is another interesting example. So we have a spreadsheet showing the employees, salesmen, we have the different salesmen, and their daily sales in a week. So we are looking for an easy way to see the performance. So let's say we are interested in seeing how much Vince made on Monday, or Larry made on Monday. What if we want to find out the entire week? So how much did Larry make in this week? This could be a huge table. So it's simple to say, okay, on Monday, Larry made 43. And here I can simply sum up the sales that Larry made in this week. But what if we have so many employees? And although I can stretch this like that, what if we have so many employees that it's just overwhelming to go through them all. Let's say we have 2,000 salesmen. Are we going to go through each one of those? Maybe we want a specific salesman. So how can we do that using some product? I recommend you pause the video and try to answer these two questions. Okay, so day sales for employee. The first question, as usual, what table do we need? We need this table. Do I need to multiply it with any other table? No, I just need the day sales. So this is our table. Now we want to apply conditions to that table. What is the condition we need to apply? So first of all, the employee name is specified, open parenthesis. So I want to make sure that the employee name, so the row of the employees is equal to the one I input and the day is equal to the day I input. Since this will be only one cell, so Larry Monday, the sum of one number is the number itself. And this is what we get. Now, how many sales did Larry make? Again, let's ask ourselves what's the table we care about. So we care about this entire table because we're interested in all the employees and all the days. I should be able to put any day and any employee and get the result. Actually, we don't need the days here because it's for the week. So we should input any name of any employee and get the result of the sales per week. What are the conditions we need to apply? So we just said we care about the employee name only. It's a week, so I need all of them, all of the rows in the table. So make sure that the name is the same as the input, close parenthesis. And finally, because one name is going to give us one column and we want to sum up the entire column, some product will do that for us. It's the same. We're cross-checking. Let's say we want to see Larry on Friday. How did he perform? Hmm. So this could give you insight on how one particular employee is performing. So this is how much sales he did this week. And this is how much sales he did in a particular day of the week. So you can see his best and worst performances. So as you see, some product here, again, helped us filter or select with input information we want. And it also helped us 
Sum up if we want. To sum up, we've explored the intuition of some product. It consists of three simple steps. Multiplication of the tables we're interested in, or selecting the table we're interested in. Applying conditions if needed. And finally, summing up the elements in the table. We've also explored when to use it. We can use it to shortcut the multiplication and the addition operations. And we can use it to select elements we want from a table that we can't really look through because it's very big. We can also combine these two usages to selectively perform multiplication and then addition. Hey, you made it to the end. Congratulations on mastering some product. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. And let us know in the comments below. What formulas do you want to demystify and master? I'll see you in the next video.